Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the select board reorg meeting to order at one o'clock on March 6, 2024. Any additions and deletions? Yeah. Sorry, anything? I don't have anything. No, I have anything. Okay, I'll make Well, that's next, so citizens' comments. Okay, um, so when you come to discuss appointment, um, to add a discussion about the public trustee of funds position, please. I have a comment, but that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate you all on winning your elections and those of you who weren't up for election on having a whole other year of getting yelled at by people. <laughs> um, I think I think it's a great team and I really am glad that, that it worked out the way it did. I know it probably doesn't have anything to do with this board, and I don't even know if it has anything to do with our town manager, but I was a little bit concerned by a couple of things in yesterday's election. Um, I feel like we could have been better prepared for what we should have known was a was going to be a higher than usual turnout. Um, and I saw several people walk away. I hope they came back, but I don't know for certain that they did, obviously. Um, and I think that's really unfortunate. And I'm also concerned about the corrals. Um, I realize it's it's the job of the people running the election to make sure that it's easy to get in and out of the building without any encumbrance. But I think those corrals were a little over the top in the sense of separating people who were advocating for a position or for for a, um, a, a um, bond or something um, to be able to to really engage in in the way that they should be able to. Um, so, you mean outside? yeah, yeah, no, I mean, inside nothing, you're not allowed to campaign inside. I mean, that's very clear, but outside from what I've read in the Vermont statutes, you're allowed to campaign outside as long as you are not hindering access to the polling place. And I think, I think the approach that was taken was a bit over the top, given the fact that, you know, there was, this is Woodstock and there weren't people marching around with grenades or anything. <laughs> And again, I realize that that may not be within the purview of this board. I can I, yeah, I just wanted to. Um, uh, I have um, been outside the town hall for probably 30 years for one campaign or another, I think, even when I wasn't running. And I have found the last several elections, people are stepping out much more and impeding voters. Um, I was in the corral all day yesterday, and I, I felt like I was able to talk to people, um, and I felt that voters, I think I think voters have felt intimidated in the past few years, and I, I'm concerned about that because I, I, you know, that's the purpose of election day, not for all of us to be able to, to jump in front of them and say things. So I didn't mind it. I guess okay. I'll just yeah. say that. <laughs> I, I have to for reasons that state reasons. Yeah, and I'll just add context to both of them. Uh, on the second point, um, to have the barrier set up was my decision uh, based on a conversation with a, a police chief and some calls he was getting um, with some passions running high on some of the ballots. We thought it was best to be over cautious than have someone say they were accosted outside and then they didn't vote one way or the other and then the close votes and it comes down to you know people being turned away whatnot so um i'll take the heat of saying criticism on that um when it comes to uh the voting uh talking to our town clerk um we had about the same turnout in woodstock as we do for presidential primary year so 2020 2016 it was around the same um the big issue they had was their machines from the state they got are relatively new and it takes more time to load the ballots and with, I think we had 27 petitions, uh, with 27 articles on top of the school, on top of the um, presidential primary, some people were putting it through eight or nine single okay. sheets, and that caused kind of some of the backup. Um, they did come up with a solution halfway through the day, which was to have a ballot box, so people just dropped the ballots off, which cut down the line, but then increased the time frame of the results after seven o'clock. Uh, but those boxes come from the state, they're they Murphy from the state, and we don't have to have a say in what we can do on that. that again, I realize that this was not intentional or malicious on the campus part. 
Thank you for the I think you're not wrong. I don't uh, see any instance comments online. Okay. All right, reorganization of the board. I make a motion to appoint Ray Bourgeois as chair of the board. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to Susan Ford as chair. I second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, just to adopt the newspaper is the right. That's the standard. Yep, that's the main one, and then the Blue the Valley News is a backup. Yeah. I would make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we have point I just wanted to say, I, I, while we use papers, I would like to also make sure we I think the listserv has become increasingly popular. So I, I would like to make sure our notices continue while not obligated, but to get posted on the sir. Yeah. Media connection or breakfast or every meeting. So we we do try our best to put everything on there. We obviously aren't perfect. Um, we do have it on the website by state statute. We need to be up there. Uh, we've also started using the Substack to get it out as well. Um, no, I, I don't believe it. Did, no. It's all on the website. If you go under um, agendas, it's there. I know. I know. I I I I will take that today was not. But, yeah. I'm fine with that. Oh, do we have Is that going to work for the town if we if make it mandatory to put it on a, a post meeting notices on the listserv? Um, I think we can, you can if you want. I mean, we do try to do it all the time. Um, I don't know if I would. So you look into the possibility and we can look at it next time. Yeah. And that's a better way to do it. Just in case the list of goes away or something else. Um, right. we want to make sure we're covered. Maybe talk. Well, I guess we'll have all the departments come to us at, at a meeting coming up. And so maybe we can talk to the other departments about it as well. Yeah, I, I think um, communication from town hall has been uh, an ongoing conversation since at least before I started. Um, I think it's going to continue to be one. Yes. Yeah. I think, you know, look, why don't you look into it? Talk to, we'll, we'll see the managers too. And I just think I don't want to jump into something that's not going to work. Next pull up point. <clears throat> The attached agenda is kind of um, the appointments, the ones highlighted um, on the on the right are the ones that have to be reappointed. Um, I have one or two updates, um, but I don't think they're um, so we got confirmed that Brad Prescott will remain um, the two rivers representative. Uh, Nicole Green is going to stay on the Planning Commission. Uh, Kim French will stay on the TDRB. Um, Lauren Dursey uh, will stay on the Conservation Commission, um, but I believe Lynn Peterson is not. So we won't reappoint point her. Kim. Okay. I'm sorry. Can I move to approve the whole slate? Oh, okay. Is there a second? I'll second. <clears throat> Any discussion? I, oh, sorry, God. I have um, some concerns with the EDC. It's supposed to be two, three year terms, and then we don't know how long the EDC has had these members on. Oh, whether they're term limits? Yes. And I know the EDC does have term limits. So if you want, I don't think the EDC has a meeting. Coming up Thursday. next Thursday. Um, so if you don't reappoint them, they won't be members for next Thursday. Um, well, I know so, that is new. So 
I have no problem with growth. She just got appointed. So you could appoint, um, you could appoint them um, under the assumption that they've they won't go past the two-year term. term. Yeah, and then we can confirm. And if they have, then they won't be appointed. Okay. You want to make that one? I would amend it. I'll amend the motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Letter of engagement for financial resources. We need, oh, we we need, need the to do public that. trustees. Oh, oh I'm sorry. So that was going to be under discussions, was it not? Oh, oh yeah. gosh, okay. Or, I thought it was with appointments. But. Well, actually, I think Jill is going to advocate for a vote. So maybe we should actually on a vote. Sure. Um, I'm going to advocate against it, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. There should have been two trustees of public funds on the ballot. There was an error made. There are two of us who are willing to serve. And yesterday we both got votes. Uh, one had six, six, I had 600 and Lauren, who's online, had 457, which I think is an endorsement that you have two people who are willing to do it, enthusiastic and accepted by the public. So I would ask you not to go through the rigmarole of advertising for a job that's been empty for a year, but to treat Lauren with respect and appoint her to something and correct the error that was made. Um, I appreciate uh, what Jill said and um, Lauren's willingness to run um, and uh, be engaged with uh, our municipality. Uh, we will obviously want to encourage people to be here and, and support us and go through the process. Um, I do have a state statute in front of me, uh, chapter uh, 33, subsection 006, 961, uh, which basically kind of lays out what should happen if a town office is uh, not filled. Um, and they say that the select board um, should post a vacancy in two public places uh, within 10 days of the creation of that vacancy. So I read that as, as of right now, there's an open spot, it's day one. The select board has 10 days to post all the open spots um, and then do whatever process they want. I think when we had open select board, at one point we had interviews and applications. Another one, we just appointed someone uh, right afterwards. I was like, we take the same approach, but I would just advise to post it first um, and then appoint someone after the fact, just so we're covered in case any issues. And there's some other spots we do have to uh, advertise as well, because there are other open positions. So we don't post them all at once and go from there would be my advice to the board. Is there a distinction because there was an error in the ballot? I mean, there wasn't really an open spot because there weren't the two. So we can get into the, the details of this, um, but what happened was when both applicants submitted their uh, petition, they both put the three-year term, and the spot that was open was a two-year term uh, based on they could have been filled for a year, uh, so they both put under the three-year one. Um, this error we should have caught by the same time their petition both said three years at the same time. Um, so that's where it kind of came to uh, the unknown area. Um, so I just advise the board to follow state statutes, but um, the board is allowed to do what they want. <laughs> and I'd argue that we don't fit into state statutes because of the error. Any comments? So if there wasn't an error, would we have had to gone through this? No, 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 no. There would have been two slots on the ballot of two different names and a person. So arguably, there should have been two spots, and one should have been vacant. No, one should have had Lauren's name on it, and one should have had mine. Well, if you both have put down the three-year term and not a two-year term, right? Oh, right. And then we could have had a writing campaign for Lauren. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I work with Lauren at the inn, and I know she's really qualified for this, so I, I hate to have to see her. I mean, be I, delayed. I, yeah, I think still it's delayed. It's so what's going to happen. When's the next meeting? It's our next. Um, meeting. Uh, for the public trustees oh. events, we have two decisions to make next week. I think, considering it's an error that's shared, I would like to move forward and appoint. Personally, um, regardless of, I, I think the state statute is 
helpful, but I do feel like we should have caught the error. Um, and she did. She did collect signatures for a petition to appear on the ballot. Who was voters? Did you make the motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. The motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren, for being willing to serve. <laughs> yes, very excited. Next is the letter of engagement. Um, so, as we discussed uh, at the last meeting, um, the board decided to go forward with Gallagher Flint and Company. Uh, to do the financial diligence uh, on the aqueduct company. Um, I shared at that meeting kind of what they were looking at uh, in front of you is kind of the actual task they would do and how they would do about it. Uh, before this meeting, the chair and the vice chair and myself had a conversation with them where we asked some more in depth questions. Um, I think I was satisfied with the answers. I'm not sure what the yeah. board thought. Um, so, what the time frame would be. Um, and what I'm asking today is for the board to give me approval to um, sign this engagement uh, with Flynn. Um, the aqueduct is meeting uh, tomorrow with the shareholders and with the board to finalize or to officially approve the letter of intent the select board signed. Uh, they gave Jire Billings the approval to um, sign it so we get the process going, uh, but they'll actually have the full vote of both board and uh, stockholders. Uh, by Friday morning, at which point I would then sign this letter and then we would be engaged with Gallagher to do the financial deal, deal, due diligence. Um, they laid out today about a three to six week process, depending on how easy it is to get the information and how easy it is to analyze it. Um, so that's what you have in front of you. So is there a motion to approve Eric's letter after he hears that the is willing to move forward. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Aye. Aye. Postings are elected into the position. So, uh, it's only a broken record. Uh, Title 24, Chapter 33 is Subsection 6, 961 of the state statutes, uh, lists that any position that's open. Uh, has to be posted by the board within 10 days. Uh, so I'd recommend that any open position that currently exists after yesterday's voting uh, be posted uh, and we receive any interest from residents. Uh, and that at which point anyone who comes forward, we can bring to the board and then we can create a process for them. So it's the only, the, so the only open position on our sheet is the one conservation commission member. Um, and then we have, so there is uh, an open position on the EDC, okay. uh, on the finance committee, um, and okay. then anyone also who doesn't accept, you know, the letter that we'll send out to them. Okay. Um, we also have the town has not yet voted to get rid of the auditor, the town position. So those three positions are also open as well. Um, and I'm sure there's a few more that we're forgetting uh, that are open. And the EDC meets Thursday. 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 So, yeah. and we're still voting an answer on title. Okay. I know that's just what we're going to do. Yeah, that's just uh, what we have to do. So, no votes necessary. Lastly, the reschedule of the March meeting. Um, in that day. Yeah, the trustees, uh, the village meeting is that night on the, 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 night. the 19th. No one select board is scheduled to have the meeting. Uh, so I think we originally talked about doing it during the day. Uh, I think 10 a.m. and 9 a.m. were thrown around, but I don't know if we've come to our final decision or not. I think nine was the last time that we talked about. And Carrie, are you going to be able to do that? I know you had a conflict. I, I So we need a motion for that, don't we? Yeah. We need to. Yeah. 
option to reschedule the March meeting for March 19th, 9 a.m. There a second? A second. All those in favor? For information, the um, students from Vermont State University in Utah came to the South Woodstock plant um, yesterday and Tim Lyon from the <laughs> incredibly thorough floor <laughs> and Mark Hunter was there to answer questions and um, my calendar shows that we'll have something preliminary from them the afternoon of the 19th. Great. Yeah. Uh, so last one is town meeting information review session. Um, we've gone there kind of just talk about uh, how it went now we're 11 days ago, um, how we went yesterday. I think uh, Roger already brought up uh, the conversation about the, the ballots going through the box um, and kind of being outside, but I didn't know if the board wanted to kind of have a larger conversation about everything, so. Um, I had a few points just to jump off of Roger's feedback. I think that we've talked about in the past and, and certainly I think we should get a head start on this, standardizing the language for the articles, especially the special articles, so that people understand that um, we are raising tax to not just appropriating um, and that we communicate those to the people that are interested. Um, I think there's also, you know, I think we learned a lot this year in terms of how we can communicate better with the public. Um, I think some of that can be done in the town report. I think some of that can be done online and I think some of that can be done in the information session. You know, Greg and I were talking about yesterday. More than one yeah. information session um, to help educate the public on what's involved in the article. Um, I don't know if anyone else has thoughts on that, but I also, to Roger's point, if I could go back to the operation of yesterday, I do think it's important as if we do start to see higher turnout that we're reevaluating and making sure that we're, you know, prepared for mm -hmm. higher turnout as we move forward. We've got likely two more elections this year. Um, so it's good for us to work with the clerk's office to make sure, and the justice piece to make sure they have everything they need ahead of time. Can they get a second machine? Uh, I was told we cannot. Yeah, it's the state allocates them. Our other our old machine is so much faster. We could get, yeah, we could get more pens. Yeah. More pens. Yeah. More pens. <laughs> well, if people wouldn't take them home. Yeah. That's true. Me a security check. I put a wine bar in the line. I put in a magic. And I did see most of the people that turned away came back. Yes. Yeah. Which was nice. No, right. Yeah. yeah. No, but they shouldn't have had to do that. Exactly. So it could also be better about making sure that Others not the presidential. I mean, it was it was a mission. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't anything, any one ballot that was consistently sense. missing. No. Yeah. And I think if we have a second informational meeting, I think that should be a night, mm. yeah. a Saturday morning and an evening. Yeah. And I think too, doing at least one in here when we have the Zoom, because yeah. down there we're just using a laptop because all the technology we have. Um, so having it here where we can film it, and maybe it's just the board talking about going through everything without um, comments, just so we can get something recorded in a nice way. Uh, but I think so. Back to one of Laura's points about um, town meeting as a whole, and I know Susan sent out um, a list of calendar topics. I think we should make sure that um, town meeting probably starts around the budget process, so end of August, September. So we are not have the same conversation next year because what happens is come December uh, we get so inundated with stuff and timelines that we fall back on what we've done in the past and I think it's good to if we can start having conversations in August uh, there's also been conversations about how to um, have the budget and nonprofits work uh, so those conversations should start earlier too so nonprofits are aware of what it may look like uh, so they can prepare uh, properly for that as well definitely 
the sooner we do that, the better. And in terms of format, I know a lot of people yesterday who advocated staying for the Australian ballot process. Obviously, the measure that we did this year was temporary for everything to be fully Australian ballot. So if we want to change it permanently, we would have to have a a, meeting. a, a public hearing where we vote on it from the floor. Um, yeah. No, I agree with that. I think we need to. I don't think we would have had enough people at a town meeting that make downstairs holds about 250 people, 1,300 people, over 1,300 people came and voted. So I think um, the board probably has to have, have a discussion about we're looking at potentially a few special town meetings between now and next March. Uh, I'll maybe try and just schedule them out so they can be not only worn properly, but then advocating it the word out about why we're having them to make sure that everyone knows what's going on and we have time to kind of stay at a case where we want. Yeah. I think having this sooner, as close to town meeting as we can when it's properly worn and have it be an evening meeting as we usually do would be beneficial so that we don't wait for later in the year. Well, it's, it's still fresh in everyone's mind. Yeah, 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 exactly. So if everybody can look at that, the list I sent this yeah. morning and just let me know, because I think then Eric and I can start putting months to the different topic things. And I would like to get that out so that um, everybody in the public has an expectation that, oh, you know, the school board is going to hit this topic on in this month and they'll be prepared for us. So I have a question. Uh, we're talking about obviously a town meeting about town meeting and this, yes. and then a town meeting about the water company, I assume. And what else, what, what are the other potential special town meetings? I don't know if it's um, public hearings, right? I would look up what the terminology is, but it's, yeah, yeah it's just, we are now, um, we're going to have to have, well, if we want, if the board decides to potentially get change town meeting for Australian ballot, that has to be, uh, if the, Step board decides to uh, acquire the aqueduct and the bond is needed. There'll be a meeting for that uh, for the wastewater plant. And that's that's got a vote, right? Is that correct? Or is that not? That's that's a bond vote. So it'll be Australian ballots. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Um, oh, so so you're talking about the vote to purchase to to go after the bond? But do you have to have a vote about actually acquiring one? So. The select board can vote to acquire um, real estate and companies oh, okay, um, if there's if there's no cost associated with it, or it's a budgeted cost. If it goes, if it's a bond, then it has to go to the. I, I'm just thinking that if you're going to have several, at least two town, well, at least one town meeting where you're going to have to have a floor vote, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to have. Informational meetings. Is there any reason those can't be combined so that that you can call a larger audience potentially? Question for you, Roger. Do you think that you know, as a citizen, the capacity for folks to handle more than one issue at a time would be welcome? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just you know, the, the, the more meetings you have, the less people you get. Exactly. Um, yeah. Not that that's that's that that's certain circumstances, but um, I don't know. It's something to think about. I I, I guess the aqueduct is time sensitive, right? Or, or very time sensitive in the sense that we can't add any more people to it. Um, the floor vote on on going to all Australian ballot is time sensitive in the sense that it has to take place well before. March. Whatever the hell we're calling it yes. here. Um, but I don't know, you know, other people know how how sensitive these time sensitivities are better than I do. So I don't know, it's just something to think about. I, I don't I I you're right, I don't have an answer whether it would actually be better or whether people can hold on to two whole ideas in their head at the same time. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be a, a challenge for us to uh, balance you know, doing the normal work of the select board uh, month by month uh, with tackling these big questions 
and scheduling them so people can get all the, all the information, get the correct information, but also take in consideration with the aqueduct, you know, the consequences of waiting and what that means. Um, and then how that fit into the schedule because Jill's here and what she'll say is every day that we can't build a house where we <laughs> fall further behind. Um, yeah. I guess the other thing, the issue of paint going through the aqueduct or wastewater bar, um, there's going to be a lot of blood on the floor. So maybe that would be done. Fortunately, I'm going to be a few more nothing off tonight. <laughs> and the wastewater one, I think, is pretty set. We're going to. There are no world we're looking at November. November, yeah. November. Yeah. When we have a regular election. So it'll be. Okay. Yeah. We'll be having a lot of talks in the meantime. Maybe a good idea to take that because I didn't know that. Um, you know, and maybe I should, but I didn't know that. Um, and people are going to start getting anxious, especially when you talk about the aqueduct because the same issue is going to affect. Right. Uh, or at least it's going to trigger people to think, like, what the hell do I think? Yeah, yeah uh, so we have a conversation with the current engineers of the main wastewater plants uh, this coming week where they're going to lay out the schedule um, and also, um, I think, advocate to keep using them. Um, and at that point, uh, we'll know for sure because we'll actually schedule a bond vote with okay. them and then we'll work backwards on how to do everything from there. Okay, great. And the finance committee can you have this? Um, it's not a public meeting. It's just a get together. So um, I'll talk to the board and we can get back to you. Any other business? And so I won't clarify what you said. Um, it's not the whole slip was not going to be there. The chair and the vice chair are, are invited. So I want to say that it's not a private meeting. We have a slip board. <laughs> Again, any other business? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Motion in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.